are you? My name is Rich Perret. I'm the GM of Twitter's developer platform, and I'm so excited to be talking to you today. So Twitter's mission is to connect the world instantly and without barriers to information. And I'm going to talk to you today about how we do this through Fabric. There it is. To give everyone the power to create and share ideas and information instantly and without barriers. So before we talk about that, let's talk about mobile and how mobile is the internet. And of course, you guys know this because 70% of mobile uh, in India is online. So mobile in 2015 uh, has surpassed laptops as the primary device of which people access the internet. Now that's global. Um, but it's hard to reach the audience on mobile because they're, they have short attention spans. Sorry. <laughs> they have too many apps to choose from, millions and millions of apps in the App Store. And they only use a few apps daily. Something like 36% uh, of apps on their, on their phone are used on a daily basis in, in terms of hundreds of apps that they might have on their phone. OK, so what can we do about it? So Twitter started on mobile. And from our origins as a SMS-based service, Twitter has really evolved along with the mobile ecosystem. And so along the way, we became aware of a whole bunch of challenges that all apps face in mobile. And we started thinking about them as barriers, like barriers to building great apps. And so we said, what can we do about these things? What are the things that, we have to, that we've had to face that all of you have to face in building great apps? And how can we bring those problems together, these uh, point solutions together as a platform? And that's Fabric. So let's talk about that. All right. So tools everyone needs to build great apps. You have to have a stable foundation. You have to be able, as a developer, to build and ship with speed and quality. You have to know your customers, right? Who's using your app? What are they hiring your app to do, right? You have to be able to grow your customer base. So knowing your customers is not enough. You have to find customers that are out there in the world and convince them to use your apps. Remember, you're facing incredible odds, right? Millions of apps in the App Store, 26% of people using uh, uh, apps daily, right? So trying to connect with your customers. And then, of course, you have to make that app a material part of your business. You have to have a monetization strategy. So it's important to know that there are a lot of different solutions for each one of these things. With Fabric, we pull together what we think are best-in-class solutions. But these are, these are problems if you're trying to build a mobile app. And I'm sure that everybody here has mobile as part of their strategy, whether you have a single app, multiple apps, um, or just uh, uh, mobile web, et cetera. So, um, when you think about solving these problems, uh, this is, uh, this is, these are the tools that you need to build great apps. OK, so let's get started. Building a stable foundation. OK, like I said, build and ship with speed and quality. So for us, that means focusing on developers. Now, this is kind of unorthodox, right? Like, we don't tend to think about the people that are developing the apps too much. But uh, there are 3 million of them in the world. Um, I'm told that in India, the, uh, this is the second largest market for Android developers. And I think in a couple of years, it's going to be the largest market. And developers are so important because they connect us to the 3 billion people in the world. And um, I don't know if anybody here is a developer, but uh, there are a lot of problems that developers face in mobile. Now, the platform vendors, uh, whether that's iOS or Android, do a really great job. Um, but there are a bunch of gaps that uh, need to be filled. So there are problems, right? Broadly, automating deployment, code signing, which if you're an iOS developer, this is a particular pain point. Even stuff like creating screenshots is a huge problem when you consider the myriad number of devices and uh, languages when you have to do localization. So broadly, this is about continuous delivery. And this is why we at Fabric invested in tools like Fastlane uh, to help. What Fastlane is, it's got a very simple value proposition. How would you like two hours back as a developer every day? What this tool or suite of tools does is it, can, is it uh, automates all the grunt work of getting your app ready for the App Store, things like taking screenshots, setting up code signing profiles, et cetera. Um, you want to build a continuous deployment chain so that um, you can build and ship with speed and quality. So 
After that, you want to focus on stability. Um, and this is one of my favorite slides here. I don't know if you can read it in, in the back. Um, the, the gentleman, the second uh, part up is saying, I wish I could give this app negative stars. That's incredible, right? Customers are coming to the App Store. They're looking to get your app. They're looking at reviews. And your app's quality, how often it crashes or how it bugs, has a direct impact on how much your app can grow. So, that's why we've invested and continue to invest in Crashlytics. This is our flagship crash reporting and fatal error detection product that allows developers to find and fix these things almost in real time. Um, we've been doing this for about four years. Crashlytics is actually how I came to Twitter. And so we're really proud that developers worldwide trust uh, Twitter and Crashlytics to help them build really great stable apps. Now, if you've never seen this, this is what it looks like. Uh, developers get all the information about uh, their app stability right in one dashboard, right? So they can track down uh, crashes by issue, version number, et cetera. And yeah, cool. <laughs> so this is CrickBuzz. This is a really popular uh, uh, Cricket app here in India. And I'm, I'm sure with the IPL coming up, right, there's going to be a lot more usage. Um, what they're saying is Crashlytics has been extremely helpful in raising the bar when it comes to user experience, right? So it's not just about a developer tool, right? It's not just about um, uh, crashes in your app and fixing bugs. It's about making your app a higher quality app so that you can reach uh, more customers and uh, grow your user base. All right. And of course, it's not a surprise that uh, crash reporting, Crashlytics, number one on iOS and Android, non, a non-fatal and crash reporting tool. Um, it's, yeah, it's a great honor that you guys all love what we're doing so much. All right. So that's build and ship with speed and quality. Um, the thing I want to leave you with here before we jump to the next section is that this is a really competitive advantage. If you invest in tools to make your developers faster, you're going to be able to release your app faster, you're going to be able to learn faster, you're going to be able to beat your competition. So please invest in awesome developer tools um, like we did. All right, so then next up, you have to know your customers, right? And so the one word that uh, you th comes to mind when you think about that is analyze or analytics. Understand how your customers are using your app. It's so important. Um, and when you think about analytics, right, uh, you typically think about engagement. Who are my customers? What are they doing in my app? Do they like what we've built? And sort of who are they at a very low level? But we think that there's a bunch of other things that you need to think about when it comes to audience insights and, of course, like I mentioned with Crashlytics, app stability. So engagement is one piece, and then you want to link that with demographic, psycho, psychographic, geographic information to really understand not only what, is, what, is, what are my customers doing in my app today, but also who are they? What kind of folks uh, are coming and using my app? And does that meet my assumptions as a product developer about who I thought was going to be using my app? Um, and of course, you link it with app stability. So it's important that you look at this stuff holistically. And so this is Answers, if you've never seen it. This is our analytics product. And it does exactly that. What you're looking at along the top is real-time users in your app. Down the middle is stability, crash-free sessions, monthly active users, daily active users. And then right below that, here's all your audience data, right? Who they are, where they live, what they're doing. This is incredibly important to understand, hey, my business thesis, my product thesis said this, who's actually using my app and how well am I retaining it? And understanding this will also help your app to grow, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So of course, uh, we're really lucky uh, and it's no surprise that uh, Answers, uh, which launched uh, last year, is already the number one analytics tool on iOS, uh, soon to be number one on Android. Um, I know that's really important in India. Okay, so analyze, you want to think about those three things, right? Like you have to know your customers to grow your business. So think about pulling all of that information together in one place so that you don't have to, as you know, if you're a product developer, have like four or five tabs open. You have, uh, you know, different analytics solutions and custom home-built analytics trying to understand what's going on in your app right now. Utilize a platform that can help you understand in real time what is going on, and then use that to drive your product backlog. Use that to drive prioritization uh, of features in your app. Okay. So then, once you have stability, once you know your customers, you want to talk about getting more customers, growing your audience, growing your customer base. Um, you really need to stand out in a crowded market. 
off the line, I was talking about, hey, there are millions of apps in the App Store, the Google Play Store, and other stores, right? And people have very low attention spans. I think the research from Microsoft was something like uh, average attention span has gone from 12 seconds down to eight seconds in the last couple of years. Eight seconds is less than the attention span of a goldfish. Right? So you really need to dial in and figure out what is unique about my app and help stand out from the crowd. And by the way, that's really the value proposition when we talk about Fabric, right? Like you need to focus on what's unique about yourself so that you can grow your app, but also uh, so you can stand out in a crowded market. Um, so let's talk about how Twitter can help you do that. So Twitter's uniquely positioned to help you grow your app. 80% um, of Twitter users are on mobile, right? So they're already predisposed. 58% um, of them have installed an app in the last month. And uh, about 52% of them are likely to make an app purchase than the average consumer, right? So they're predisposed to be interested in what you're building. Uh, this is probably my favorite slide in the whole deck. Uh, 44 million tweets about the top 20 apps in the last 30 days alone. People are talking about apps on Twitter. Now, and again, this is just the top 20 apps. If we expanded this visualization to talk about all apps, the whole screen would light up. This is an incredible uh, uh, audience for you to be able to tap into. All right, and so if you use Twitter, you know what this looks like. Your app looks natural on Twitter when people are talking about it, whether they're talking about it organically, so people uh, tweet out from your app in terms of social sharing and then they get a really nice install link, whether that's paid, right, so you have a nice video app that says, hey, call to action, hey, install my app. Um, the third thing over here, the Boots, really interesting, that's an app that's powered by Twitter, but it's in another mobile app, and we'll talk about that in a minute with the Twitter audience platform. So, What's the reach of this thing? So Twitter is just one app, but with the Twitter audience platform, again, that's ads brokered by Twitter into other apps. Our reach is over 700 million mobile audience. It's incredible scale. Um, the other reason that it's so effective to talk about growing your app on Twitter is we understand the audience really, really well. We can target them based on a ton of things, who they follow, what they're tweeting about, other interests, just to name a few. And that behavioral data works on Twitter for targeting, but also, like I said, in that non-Twitter audience. So you can only, you, again, this is all about bringing it together, one place, um, all this stuff works, Twitter audience platform and on Twitter natively. Um, so you go out and you get some great traction, you bring a lot of customers into your app, but uh, that's the only, only the first part of the story. You really have to limit churn because that's going to limit your growth. 75% probability of churn if a customer has one session within the first 30 days. That's crazy, right? You have to get them into your app really quickly. That number drops to 52% if, the, the, if you can get them up to three sessions in the first 30 days. And so what does this mean? It means that onboarding, that initial experience in the app, is super, super critical. Um, this is digits. We used to think when you're signing up and doing uh, great onboarding that Email and password, which we staple on the web, used for a long time, this was the right thing to do. Increasingly, it's become clear to us that phone number verification is the way to go. Um, you want to choose a seamless sign-up platform that has, first of all, global reach. So people are telling us more and more that this is what they want, uh, especially in places like India. You want to choose something that's more effective. This is the efficacy rate of something like email or social sign-in. So if you use phone number verification, you're actually going to see less bounces, more sign-up. This is exactly what you need to do when you need to optimize on that great onboarding experience. And then, of course, you could go and build this yourself, but uh, this is uh, SMS networks, and it's fairly complicated and fairly expensive. Now, Twitter has to do this ourselves for our own apps. And so by opening this up to you, our belief is that we can build better sign-in together. All right. All right, so, <laughs> so Digits has been in the market for over a year, and it's got a tremendous response from app developers, particularly in places like India. Uh, this is Hala. It's a great uh, missed call, block call app. Uh, built right here, um, they saw 25% increase in user verification when they switched to digits, right? So think about that. 25% more onboarding signups, people that would have bounced through other methods. So that's amazing. They also save money, 50K US dollars uh, a year by switching to digits. All right, so in summary, 
tap into the power of Twitter in our audience. This is where people are talking about apps, and this is where you need to reach them and be that voice in the crowded market. Remember, most people are making a decision to install an app based upon a recommendation of a friend or somebody that they follow on a social network that they trust, right? So you really want to get in there at the moment when they're on mobile and they're making that decision, hey, I think I'd like to try out uh, this other app. And once you get them, think about how you're going to have an awesome onboarding experience, how you're going to get them to sign up and make it frictionless for them so that they don't churn. All right, so now let's talk about making money, right? Uh, we believe that no mobile platform is complete without a, stra a strategy to turn your app into a material business. First lesson, if you take nothing else away from this presentation, is don't wait. Don't wait to monetize your app. This is a curve that I'm sure some of you in the room are familiar with. This is the adoption curve of a, of a hit app or a hit game, right? So you're building an app, you're launching it, maybe you get a little bit of traffic, and then all of a sudden, boom, you hit this, the left side of the curve. If you start putting in monetization features at that green line, you got a couple problems. First problem is you missed out on all the revenue on the other side, right? That's, that's not great. The second problem is you could really alienate your core audience, right? Because you're trying to put monetization into a product that they already know and love and it might feel really unnatural. So at launch and hopefully before launch, have a strategy for monetization in your app. Don't say, oh, it's a success, now we gotta monetize. Go early. And when you go early, what you wanna do is thinking about use a platform that gives you flexibility, right? Uh, whether you decide that the right thing for your app is banner ads, whether it's full screen ads, video ads, or even native ads that flow along with the content in your app, you want to choose a platform that enables you to do all of these things to choose what is right for your app. Every app is going to monetize differently, right? You want the ads you're using to feel natural. You don't want them to feel awkward, bolted on, um, or anything like that. So, New Delhi TV, NDTV, um, they use Mopub. They actually use a lot of the Fabric Suite. They use uh, Crashlytics, Twitter, et cetera. Um, look at what they're saying. They're saying, hey, Mopub gives us the flexibility uh, and uh, it leads to higher quality, better fills, which helps monetize our ads better, right? So it's not just about, hey, there's advertising. It's better advertising, more effective advertising um, through Mopub. And so What's Mopub all about? Mopub is our platform for doing monetization. We pioneered this, and we've been in business for five years operating at scale. Some of the best and most popular apps in the world use Mopub for monetization because it offers this level of flexibility and customization. So if you take nothing else away, don't, don't wait. Make sure you choose a flexible platform, and also choose a platform that has been operating at scale for a long time so you have a real good partner in monetization. So again, tools everyone needs to build great apps. Stable foundation, you gotta know your customers, you gotta be able to grow them, and finally, you gotta be able to turn your app into a material business. Um, this is Haptic, this is a personal assistant app, it's built right here. Fabric has transformed the way the app development works at, at Haptic. That's amazing, that's our goal. We want to bring all of these things together to transform the way that people build mobile apps. And I don't just mean develop, but I mean develop and grow, et cetera. We want to be able to say that uh, people run their business on Fabric. And that's uh, what we're setting out to do. And obviously, we're really happy uh, with Haptic. All right, so I ran through a whole bunch of these solutions, and I just want to recap them one more time. Your Crashlytics for crash analysis, beta testing, build automation, Answers for real-time insights into your app's performance. You get digits for seamless phone number sign-in. You got Mopub for monetizing traffic to your apps. And you have Twitter for really reaching and connecting your audience to your audience so you can grow your app. Um, like I showed you at the beginning, there, this is, uh, there are lots of challenges that face you as a mobile developer. And we're really proud of the ones that we solve. But we know that we're not the only ones out there building really great products for mobile developers. Um, there are a lot of companies out there that are building great stuff, um, Amazon, Stripe, Optimizely, just to name a couple. And uh, we think that you deserve not only the great stuff that we make, but sort of the best of the best. And so we've partnered with them and many other folks to make it just as easy to get up and running with our core stuff on Fabric as their core stuff. So all these kits are available through the Fabric platform. So that's Fabric. 
I hope that uh, what we've been able to build in our lessons learned at Twitter will be able to help you uh, build great mobile apps by providing a, a really stable foundation to take care of a lot of the work that all apps have to do so that um, you can focus on building what makes your app unique. Um, Twitter is coming back in about a month in Bangalore for our Hello World tour. Uh, I encourage you to come and check it out. There will be developer advocates, folks talking deeply about building great apps with Fabric, more technical details for sure. So please do uh, come in and check that out. Thank you all very much.